Hey everyone, welcome back with a very important lecture in ISO IEC 17025 2017 edition in resources requirements, equipments. Lab shall have all equipments required to perform lab activities and get a valid results. And the equipments in the new edition different than in 2005 edition because it doesn't only include in instruments and auxiliary apparatus but also include software, measurement standards, reference material, reference data, reagents, and consumables. So now, all facilities related to the lab activity and related to the analysis of target analytes considered as equipments. And they mentioned in note 1 that reference materials or certified reference materials, CRM, shall be provided by a reference material providers who meet the requirement of ISO IEC 17034 and it will be provided with the certificate including the homogeneity of the sample, stability of the sample, measurement uncertainty also for each parameter and the metrological traceability and it will contain the parameters or parameters that you want target analytes and the result for these parameters with acceptable range based on the measurement uncertainty calculation from this to this if you analyze this sample and you will get the result in this range so it will be accepted and if not if you are out of this range so it will be failed not like PT sample or proficiency test sample and I mentioned that before in definition PT sample is unknown sample for the laboratories you will receive PT sample from PT provider who meet the requirement of ISO IEC 17043 and it will be with the certificate including the target analytes that this sample contain these target analytes then you will analyze these target analytes and you will get the result and you will send again the result to this provider who will calculate the measurement uncertainty and the score for each target analyte then he will give you the last result with acceptable range if you are between this range so it will pass and if you are out of this range it will be failed and <coughs> BT sample is very important for each lab for each method also if, if you have any accredited method you, sh you shall analyze BT sample for this method every year to ensure your competency when the lab uses equipments outside their permanent control it shall ensure that all the requirements for these equipments are met and here we talk about subcontract if the lab has a subcontract with another lab for any of their lab activities or in case of mobile facility or customer facility these facilities or these equipments are not under the permanent control of the lab so the lab shall ensure that all the requirements for this document ISO IEC 1725 2017 edition related to the equipments and also other guidelines used are met such as calibration program if they, they shall ensure that calibration for the instrument are accepted so they shall ensure that the equipments which are not under their permanent control are performing well and such as sensitivity that this instrument can get the lowest concentration and the highest concentration required for these target analytes measurement uncertainty required also for this target analyte and also calibration this instrument they run this instrument daily or every, with every sequence and they can get the acceptance criteria uh, such as slope higher than or equal to 0.995 and verification standard with an acceptance range plus minus 10 percentage as example so based on this point the lab shall ensure that all the requirements are met for all equipments under its responsibility even it was under their permanent control or not also lab shall have a procedure lab shall have a procedure so it must be you have to prepare this procedure for handling storage use and the plant maintenance for equipments 
to ensure proper function and to prevent any contamination or deterioration. So based on this clause 643, different procedures shall be prepared. First, standard operating procedure for each instrument inside the lab, including how to run this instrument, how to prepare a sequence for this instrument, how to get results from this instrument, and also how to calibrate the instrument. And you can add PM or preventive maintenance for this instrument, how to maintain the instrument by the analyst and also by the engineer or provided company. And another procedure which is general procedure for all instruments inside the lab. It will be for preventive maintenance PM for all instruments. And that will include installing or setting up the instrument. Once you receive the instrument from the provided company, they will send engineer to the lab to set up the instrument for you to make it ready for the lab activity or for the analysis. And in the same procedure, BM or preventive maintenance also will be included in this procedure. And BM should be at least two times per year. Two times per year will be enough for the instrument to prevent any problem before it happens. And also emergency maintenance. If you have any problem during the year, then you can call the engineer to come to fix this problem. So they will set up the instrument for you and they, they will make it ready for the analysis. Then you will have two times maintenance per year. They will check the instrument and they will check every part in the instrument. If they need to change any part in the instrument, they will do this. And after that also, if there is any problem during the year, you can call them to fix this problem. And that will be in a contract between the lab and the provided company. And the last procedure for this point also handling transport and storage of chemicals, reagents, standards and reference materials. As I said before that equipment now in 2017 edition include also chemicals, standards, reference materials and reagents. So you shall prepare a procedure for handling, transport and storage of them. And that was my suggestion for this point. You shall prepare SOP for each instrument inside the lab. And if your lab were certified according to 2005 edition, so you already prepared these SOPs. And another general procedure for maintenance of an instrument inside the lab. Preventive maintenance and emergency maintenance as I explained before. And that will be different from lab to another lab. And according to your lab rules, you will prepare this procedure. And another procedure for handling, transport and storage of chemicals, reagent, uh, reference material and standards and also that will be different from lab to another lab you will prepare these procedures based on the lab rules lab shall verify that equipments conform to the specified requirements before use so all type of equipments inside the lab shall be verified before use to ensure that you can get a valid results using these equipments as example in instruments for instruments, after setting up the instrument, you shall make calibration, verification, and also check the sensitivity of the instrument. And for some types of instruments, such as GC mass or LC mass, you will make tuning for the mass. So after setting up the instrument, you will make calibration. Calibration using calibration standards, and the slope of calibration shall be higher than or equal to 0 0.995 to be accepted. And verification, you will run verification standard from the standard that you use for calibration or better to be from another company. And the result or the result of this verification standard or recovery shall be plus minus 10 percentage or according to the guideline you use. And sensitivity, you will check the sensitivity of the instrument. If your instrument can get the lowest concentration required for the target analyte or not, LOQ or minimum reporting limit, minimum quantitation limit. And for GC mass or LEC mass, you will make tuning for the mass to check if the mass can get the molecular weights required for your target analyte or not. But verification for the instruments will be different from an instrument to another instrument. And you can only determine what are the types of quality controls required to verify your instrument before use. And auxiliary apparatus such as micropipettes, pH meter, balance or others shall be calibrated internally before use and also externally every year to ensure the performance of these equipments. 
and chemicals such as reagent solvents standards shall be provided with a calibration certificate including the expiry date and also measurement uncertainty and after that also we have reference material or PT sample these are provided with the reference material or PT producers that meet the requirement of ISO as I said before ISO IEC 17 or 34 or 43 and software also shall be validated software within the instrument will be validated and also if if you use limbs inside the lab also shall be validated to ensure that these equipments all of them are equipments are considered as equipments in the new edition to ensure that they are performing well you shall verify these equipments before use equipments used for measurement shall be capable of achieving the measurement accuracy and uncertainty required to provide a valid results you shall ensure that you can get the lowest concentration required and the highest concentration required for your target analytes with the high accuracy and also the working range from this concentration to this concentration from the lowest to the highest you can get a valid results and you will do this during method validation during evaluation of method performance parameters so your equipments in this case or your instrument performing well and achieving the required performance and also we shall ensure that the instrument also can get the uncertainty required to provide a valid results as example chloramphenicol in food of animal origin is a carcinogenic compound and it's banned so minimum required performance limit for this compound 0.3 microgram per kilogram according to European limits and this is the highest accepted concentration higher than this concentration in the sample the sample will be failed so you shall ensure that you can get lower than this concentration with the high accuracy and also measurement uncertainty shall be very low to provide a valid result for this compound so you shall ensure that the instrument used for analysis of this compound highly sensitive instrument can get very low concentration with the high accuracy and can provide also you the required measurement uncertainty and here are conditions to calibrate the equipments Measuring equipment shall be calibrated when the accuracy or measurement uncertainty affect the validity of results and also calibration is required to establish metrological traceability of the reported results. Any equipment inside the lab used for measurement shall be calibrated before use to ensure that this, this equipment is performing well and you can get a valid result using this equipment. So you shall make calibration and you shall get acceptance criteria for this calibration for the equipment before use such as an instrument as I said before you will make calibration and you shall get slope acceptance slope within acceptance criteria and also you will run verification standard to ensure that calibration is is accepted and if you didn't get the acceptance criteria you shall recalibrate the, the instrument again and also same thing you will do for auxiliary apparatus and in case of auxiliary apparatus you shall make also external calibration by a content calibration lab to ensure or to establish metrological traceability of the reported results and based on the last point lab shall prepare a calibration program for all equipments inside the lab including auxiliary apparatus or also other instruments so the lab shall establish calibration program for all auxiliary apparatus inside the lab there should be a yearly calibration that will be external by a content calibration lab content calibration lab that will be traceable to national metrology institute which is traceable to SI units so to establish metrology traceable, metrological traceability also of the reported results as example for microbipeds, thermometers or data loggers and weights used for calibration of balance these equipments shall be calibrated externally every year by a content calibration lab which is traceable to NMI or National Metrology Institute which is traceable to SI units to establish metrological traceability of the reported results and balance or pH meter that will be calibrated internally inside the lab balance will be calibrated by the calibrated weights and pH meter also will be calibrated by buffers 
and also for other instruments used for measurement of target analytes shall be calibrated before use to ensure that you can get a valid result using this instrument and you shall enable the equipments that need a calibration within a specific period to prevent any misuse of the instrument after the due date of calibration it's better to label your equipment with the calibration date and the due date of calibration on this label you will add the name of the instrument and serial number or code of the instrument if it's there and calibration date and the due date for this calibration and that should be clear on the equipment and also you can prepare a form a specific form for calibration and verification records calibration verification form in this form you will add the serial number and date date for calibration and verification and calibration if pass or fail and verification also if pass or fail and also we shall label the equipments which is under maintenance or in a breakdown until this equipment will be working and verified so label out of service equipment until it has been verified to prevent any misuse of this equipment during the breakdown or maintenance you shall label the equipment with out of service label and this label shall be clear for everyone so no one can use the equipment during the breakdown or maintenance and also you shall prepare a specific form for maintenance including the date of issue when this problem started or happened and the type also the type of issue if this pm normal maintenance preventive maintenance or there is a breakdown in the instrument and what is the action taken what you did to fix the problem did you call the engineer to come to fix the problem for you or you did the solution by yourself and the date of use when you enter the instrument in analysis of your target analytes and with this form you will attach the calibration because after after you will fix the instrument you shall verify that this instrument is performing well so you will make calibration for the instrument and you should you shall get the acceptance criteria so you will attach the calibration that you did for the instrument with the acceptance criteria and also after maintenance of any breakdown in the instrument you shall ensure that the instrument is performing well and you shall examine if there is any deviation from the specified requirements and that will be by calibration verification and also quality control samples and control chart so if you didn't get the acceptance criteria you can repeat the analysis again and if you still don't have the acceptance criteria in this case you shall initiate management of non-conformity so lab shall examine the effect of deviation from the specified requirements and shall initiate management of non-conformity and that will be explained in details in clause number 7 10 and also we shall make regular check for the equipments to maintain confidence in the equipment performance measuring instruments and also auxiliary parts these equipments shall be verified before use and the performance of these equipments shall be checked before use to ensure that these equipments are performing well so first you will make you will check the performance of the equipments you will check the performance and the performance of the equipments will be different from equipment to another equipment so based on your equipment you will prepare a, a specific form which is a performance form as example HPLC performance form or LC mass performance performance form and you will add some criteria and in this criteria you found this criteria accepted or not so it will be different from instrument to another instrument you will have this form performance form and also you will make calibration and verification for the instruments and it should be within acceptance criteria and you will record in the calibration and verification form and for auxiliary parts also you will make calibration and verification and other equipments as I said there is external calibration so you shall check you shall check the performance of the equipment before you will use for analysis and for regular check during the run itself for the instrument you shall run a verification standard or intermediate check standard every 
a specific number of samples as in standard method for water every 10 samples so every 10 samples you will run a verification standard then another 10 samples another verification standard another 10 samples another verification sam st standard in the same sequence and if you didn't get the acceptance criteria for any one of these verification standard any sample run after that shall be rerun again so if there is any problem in the instrument during the run itself you will know that from the result of the verification standard when calibration or reference material data include reference values or correction factors the lab shall ensure that these reference values or correction factors updated and implemented to meet the specified requirements this point may be not applied in your lab for your equipment or your lab activities but if you have any reference value or correction factors shall be multiplied to the final result to get the real concentration you better add this to the sequence in the equipment or you can multiply this correction factor outside after you will get the result but it's better to be on the instrument itself to be sure that this result multiplied so the lab shall ensure that correction factors or reference values updated and implemented to meet the specified requirement and to get the real results as example for that point and i explained this before if you have matrix effect on the target analyte if there is any effect from the matrix on the target analyte in this case you need to remove or eliminate this effect of matrix because it will enhance or suppress the concentration of the samples so in this case you will prepare a standard matrix sample standard you can prepare a standard matrix sample and from this sample you will get the correction factor this correction factor will be shall be multiplied to all sample results and to the spike sample to get the real concentration and i will give you example for this it's not our uh, subject today but also it will be good technical point to understand for every sequence you will run you shall prepare quality control samples as i explained before in the validation course from these quality control samples we have spike sample spike sample prepared by spiking or addition of known concentration of target analyte standard or the known concentration of target analytes on the sample itself and the sample should be clear from the target analyte so you can use blank sample so here i spiked the sample the blank sample with 20 microgram per liter of standard of target analytes and i got the result was 8 microgram per kilogram so it divided by 20 if i want to calculate the recovery will be 40 percentage and that will be failed so i found from this point that the there is a matrix effect the effect of matrix on target analyte so it makes suppression for the result the result was 20 it should be 20 on the instrument or 18 or 19 according to me it should have accepted recovery but i found 8 microgram per kilogram which is 40 percentage recovery so i prepared the standard matrix sample standard matrix sample by addition of standard to the to the extracted solution of the sample extracted solution of the sample at the end i will bring the extracted solution from the sample at the end then i will spike the standard also will be with known concentration i spike the same concentration as the spike sample 20 microgram per, per liter on the hpc vial at the end then 20 microgram per liter, i ran the sample i found the result was 10 microgram per kilogram in this case i will calculate correction factor correction factor in this case will be calculated by dividing 20 by the theoretical concentration by the practical concentration 20 divided by 10 equal 2 this is the correction factor correction factor shall be multiplied to all sample results and also to the spike sample if i multiply it to uh, to uh, 8 microgram per kilogram 8 spike sample the result i will get 16 microgram per kilogram so 16 divided by 20 it will be 
80% and that will be accepted recovery. So in this case, I shall multiply the correction factor. I shall update and implement the correction factor in the sequence or outside in any software. So the lab shall ensure that correction factor or reference value a value is updated and implemented to meet the specified requirements and to get the real concentration as in this example. Also, in case of PT, proficiency test sample or certified reference material sample, sometimes you will find in the report, calculate result based on recovery correction. Calculate result based on recovery correction. In this case, you will get the correction factor also, but from the spike sample itself. After you will spike the sample, you will calculate correction factor from the spike sample, not from standard matrix sample, then you will multiply this correction factor also to the PT result, PT result that you get you got from the instrument to get the real concentration of this PT or this CRM. And that will be different from method to another method, from lab to another lab, from equipment to another equipment, but at the end you shall ensure that all correction factors you will get, dilution factor, correction factor, reference value, you will update and implement on the equipment itself or in any software outside to get the real concentration or real result at the end. Measures to prevent unintended adjustment from invalidating results. And that's related to risk-based approach. You should have some measures to avoid or eliminate or reduce any risk due to unintended adjustment of the equipment from invalidating results. Example for that, measuring instruments. For measuring instruments, you shall take some actions or take some measures to eliminate any risk that will affect the validity of results at the end. First, as example, you shall ensure the performance of the instrument. First, before running the samples, you shall ensure the performance of the instrument. And that will be different from an instrument to another instrument. As example, for HPLC, you will run the HPLC with the mobile face until stabilization. And then you will, you will check the pressure. Stabilize. If it's stabilized, in this case, you will start running the samples. Then you will run at the beginning reagent blank or solvent blank to check if there is any contamination during the run or not. If there is any contamination, that will be subtracted from all samples running after the reagent blank. And calibration standards. After reagent blank, you run calibration standards and verification standard. Calibration standards and the slope of calibration standard or correlation coefficient shall be higher than or equal to 0.995. And the verification standard, the acceptance criteria for verification standard, it's different according to the concentration of the standard itself, if it's low or high. But it can be plus minus 10 percentage as example. Verification standard also every 10 samples, as I said, you will run, you shall run verification standard or intermediate check standard every 10 samples to ensure that there is no problem happen to the instrument during the run itself. And if there is any problem happen, uh, the, accept, uh, the, the verification standard result will not be accepted. So any sample after this verification standard shall be rerun again. And also for mass, mass spectrometry, GC mass or LC mass, you shall make tuning, check tune, to check, uh, to check by, uh, by running a solution, specific solution, to check if the mass can detect all required masses or not, all required molecular weights or not. And PM also, this is also one of the important things that you will do to maintain your instrument preventive maintenance. And that will be two times per year as example under contract with the provided company. And the last point, 6413. Records shall be retained for equipment. And this is a very important point because you will know here what are the forms required to be prepared for all equipments in the lab. Such as instrument, measuring instrument. For each instrument in the lab, you shall prepare a logbook file and that logbook i think if you were certified according to 2005 edition you already prepared this logbook file including equipment record form and this is a very simple form 
Once you set up the instrument, you receive the instrument and set up the instrument, you will record in this form all parts with the receiving date, all parts of the instrument with the receiving date. And if you receive any new part also, you shall record in this form with the receiving date. And after that, authorization sheet, authorized personal, only authorized personal for this method and the instrument will be recorded in this form. And this is very simple form also. Maintenance form, any maintenance, as I said before, I talked about this form before, any problem happen in the instrument, you will write the problem and taking action. And calibration verification record also explained before, before and with acceptance criteria for each. And performance, performance shall be every run before running the samples. You will check the performance of the instrument and you will record the performance of the instrument in this form and that will be different from an instrument to another instrument. And for equipment also we have auxiliary parts. Auxiliary parts such as balance, microwave bits, freezer, fridge, pitch meter, thermometers, data loggers. As example balance, balance you shall check the performance of the balance before use. Using calibrated weights you will, do, you will make calibration and verification using calibrated weights. So you shall keep also calibration certificate for these calibrated weights and that will be external by a content calibration lab. And you shall check also if the balance is clean or not and you will record that in the balance performance form. Microwave bits. For microwave bits, you will make external calibration every year by a content calibration lab. So you shall keep a calibration certificate and you shall make every three months also to check the accuracy of the microwave bit. And that will be different from microwave bit to another one based on the volume used in this by this microwave bit. So you will check using three volumes as example. As example, if your microwave bit from two up to 20 microliter. So you will use 2 and 10 and 20. You will make, uh, you will check 2, two microliter, uh, 10 microliter and 20 microliter if the accuracy was accepted or not. And the acceptance criteria for each volume will be written in the certificate with the microwave bit. Freezer and fridge. For freezer and fridge, you shall check the temperature of them every day, every day. And you shall record this in the temperature recording form. And you shall keep also the calibration certificate for thermometers or data loggers. And also measuring standard considered as equipment in the new edition. So for measuring standard, you shall keep stock standard preparation form. How did you prepare your standard, stock standard, from the powder or liquid standard that you received from the manufacturer? And for the powder or liquid standard that you received from the manufacturer, you shall keep the calibration certificate including measurement uncertainty, expiry date for this standard, and preservation temperature. After that, you will prepare from the stock intermediate standard. So you shall have intermediate standard preparation form, including how did you prepare this intermediate standard from stock. And after that, also you have a spike standard preparation form. How did you prepare your spike standard that you will use for spiking? And that calibration standard preparation form also, how did you prepare your calibration standards? For stock standard, it can be valid for one year. Intermediate standard uh, preparation, because it's not used much, it can be, it can be used uh, valid for six months. Spike standard preparation form because you will use it too much. You will use always. You will open this uh, vial, so it, it can be valid for three months. And calibration standard also can be valid for three months. And for some for some methods or some target analytes, you shall prepare calibration standard every day. If these standards are degraded. Uh, for stock standard, it can be valid for one year because it's more stable, more stable because it's prepared from the stock that you received from the manufacturer. And you shall keep label on the standard, prepared standard, and this is very important. Labels shall be clear, clear for everybody, including the name of the standard, preparation date, expiry date, and preservation temperature and initial. And also reference materials such as reference CRM or PT samples, 
these are also equipment considered as equipment in the new edition as I said before CRM shall be provided by a CRM provider who meet the requirement of ISO 17034 and PT 17043 and reagents also reagents you shall be repair list of chemicals including all chemicals that you will receive from the store inside your lab with the date and the expired date for these chemicals mobile phase preparation form and this is very easy form according to the instrument you use whatever mobile phase you will prepare you will record that in the form solvent preparation form any solvent you will prepare inside the lab from any from the chemical you shall also record this solvent and all equipment inside the lab shall be labeled and this is very important to prevent any misuse and this is also based on the risk and here's some important notes software now considered as an equipment so it shall be validated such as any equipment in the lab when the lab use any software developed by the lab or by an external provider shall be validated to demonstrate that this software is fit for purpose and you should know also that most of these softwares used inside the lab are built in built in equipment built in equipment and that's already validated by the provider and any prepared excel sheet any prepared excel sheet and this is very important point if you have internal audit or external audit by the assessment uh, any prepared excel sheet shall be protected if the assessor click on any cell in the excel sheet he cannot he should not be able to open you shall protect this excel sheet by password so any prepared excel sheet shall be protected and validated and also LEMS, LEMS for LEMS it's already validated by the provider and another also very important note for standards after expired date after the your standard will be expired if you cannot get new standard or you don't have budget enough budget to get new standards you can extend the validity of these standards you can extend the validity period for these standards for maybe one year by analysis of crm you will analyze certified reference material to ensure that the standard is still valid and you can depend on this and you can use it but you shall use certified reference material because it's more accurate than the spike sample and I will give you example also for this by calculation to understand this point why certified reference material is more accurate than spike sample this point also not our subject but still it's a very important technical point I shall provide to you so if you want to extend as i said if you want to extend the expiry the, the validity of your standard so you shall analyze crm certified reference material instead of spike sample using this this standard because as here in this example as you know this equation if you want to calculate sample concentration the concentration of the sample equal to area of sample area of the sample divided by area of the standard multiplied to the standard concentration and from this curve as example relation between area and concentration for the concentration of the standard 10 microgram per liter area was 100 standard concentration was 10 microgram per liter and for this concentration area was 100 if the standard is not degraded your standard is okay is not degraded so in this case the area of sample as example 150 area of sample 150 divided by the area of standard for this concentration 100 multiplied to 10 it will be equal to 15 microgram per kilogram so this will be the real concentration for the sample 15 microgram per kilogram so if the standard is not degraded so what will happen if the same standard but degraded degraded in case of degraded standard and the sample result also the area of the sample was 150 divided by as example 75 this concentration of the standard will be de degraded so it will be reduced it will be decreased so it became 75 multiplied to 10 
so it will be equal to 20 microgram per kilogram the sample concentration became 20 microgram per kilogram which is higher than the real concentration so the concentration of the standard reduced but the concentration of the sample increased so you cannot depend on the sample spike sample only in this case because that you will do by yourself in the lab and the, the same thing what will happen to the sample will happen to the uh, spike sample also but in case of CRM that you received from the CRM provider with a certificate including the result uh, of your target analytes uh, with the acceptance range if you use this sample uh, to be analyzed by using this standard you will know exactly if this standard is still valid or degraded or what will what happened to this standard so it's a very important point to know that CRM is more accurate than spike sample in this case to ensure that your standard is still valid and can be used and also you shall prepare a procedure SOP for equipments the purpose of this procedure to ensure that all equipments inside the lab whether inside the lab or not under the permanent control of the lab such as mobile facility or customer facility meet the specified requirement according to ISO IEC 1725-2017 edition and other international guidelines used verified and well maintained and scope of this procedure this procedure will be applied to all equipment inside the lab or not under the permanent control of the lab as I said in customer facility or mobile facility and these equipments include instruments auxiliary parts reagents chemicals uh, reference material reference data and also software and for the procedure first point equipments shall meet the specified requirements of the method of the method including sensitivity and accuracy an instrument shall be able to get the lowest concentration required for required target analytes and also shall get accurate results for this target analytes so the instrument shall be fit for purpose and that means uh, when you select the method to analyze specific target analytes you shall also select the instrument which is fit for this method to analyze these target analytes so the instrument shall be fit for purpose and that will be under responsibility of the technical lead and also responsible analyst the authorized analyst for this method and the analyst shall ensure that the received equipments are performing well and they can get the required criteria or have accepted criteria as example an instrument an instrument you shall check the sensitivity of the instrument after setting up the instrument sensitivity accuracy saturation point of the instrument calibration curve with accepted slope and also verification standard with acceptance criteria for standards you will receive the standards with calibration certificate from the provider with the measurement uncertainty and also expiry date should be accepted with accepted criteria and also a CRM or PT as I explained before so according to the type of the equipment you shall ensure that this equipment is performing well and also can get the required criteria also analyst shall prepare a logbook file for each instrument to record the history of the instrument from the date of receiving and that's explained in details analyst shall label the instrument not, instrument, not only the measuring instrument but all equipments with a specific label to prevent also misuse and that's also explained maintenance plan maintenance plan is very important and you shall record how you will make maintenance in the lab and if you have also contract with the provider or not you shall write this here out of service equipment and what are the actions taken in case of breakdown also you can write or record in this procedure at the end of this lecture i just want to request from your side to not only listen to the lecture but also try to apply try to make or prepare these forms that I uh, mentioned in the equipments and try to also prepare the procedure by yourself for your lab not only listen to the lecture and go to the another lecture and like this try to make your system even if you are not working inside the lab try to make your system thank you and see you in the next lecture